on this side we have our gas cylinder that's going in to, it's connected to the Rubens tube. And that's just an aluminium tube that's got a whole heap of tiny little holes drilled all the way along it. We're going to light that up and you see a wall of fire. Now on the other side, I just show you, uh, it's all taped up so I won't. On the other side, I've got a little speaker that I've attached to, in, to a, a piece of cork that I've, that I've pushed into the end of the pipe. So for example, Here's my spare. So little speaker, yay big, attached to that end of the um, Rubens tube and it's going into this function generator. So you'll be using function generators like this in lab class. It produces a nice sine wave that turns into a, 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 a high pitch note in, in the speaker. So this is the example of the closed closed tube we were talking about before. The sound wave from that speaker is going to travel along the pipe it'll reflect off the end and create a standing wave. All right, so let's get some fire happening. <laughs> you might need to close the door in order for it to stay. There we go. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you what it looks like, then I'll turn it off again, we'll talk about the physics, I'll show you again. Can't leave it running for too long, otherwise the speaker will melt and then it won't work anymore. So let's turn on our function generator. Can you hear that? If I open the door a little, you can hear it a bit more. And if I get the frequency of this correct, so I'm lowering the pitch, and we'll find it at some point. We'll find the resonance. There we go. Look, standing wave in the fire. So if I change the pitch, it goes away. If I bring the pitch back, you can see how some of the flames dip back down to zero. And we've got a standing wave there. I can increase the frequency and find another one. All right, so let's just turn that off for a second, give it a chance to cool down. Don't want the speaker to be melting inside. So what's going on here? Why is the sound affecting the fire like that? So what's going on is that the regions of pressure inside the tube that are oscillating, the antinodes of the standing sound wave, are actually preventing the gas from escaping from the tube. So you can see that when the sound wasn't at the right frequency, the flames were at a certain height. Then when I got it to the right frequency to form a standing wave, some of the flames dipped down lower. And they, they were the antinodes of the pressure oscillation. So for a closed, closed tube, you remember from the lecture, who can tell me what is at the end of the closed, closed tube? A node or an antinode? Antinode, great. So we'll fire it up once more we'll see the standing waves, we'll count the nodes and we'll see whether there is an antinode at either end of the pipe. So let's do this once more. Light it up. Maybe turn the height up a little bit more. Great. Let's turn the function generator back on. And you can see that even though I had it at the right frequency before, now it isn't forming a standing wave. What's happening there is that, well, the gas, the tube was cold again when I turned it off, and so the frequency is no longer correct to form a standing wave. I have to find it again. It's because the speed of sound in a gas depends on the temperature of the gas. So as this heats up, I have to chase around the resonant frequency. There we go again. Uh, we'll go up a bit higher. That's a better one. And we can see, possibly, at the ends of the either tube, you can see that the flame height drops down. So there is a pressure antinode, as you expect, 
and as you increase the frequency, the number of nodes increases. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 nodes. And if I decrease the pressure to the next one, it's counted again. Got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We had 12, now we have 11. Physics makes sense. Alright, I think that's pretty much the end of my demonstration.